Silver, to me now, reminds me a lot of what gold was like earlier this year when it was building a base above 2000 and we then you know exploded and now we're getting close to 2700 silver is doing the same thing at $30 so i think $30 to silver is kind of like 2000 was for gold we're building a strong base of support around $30 right now we're 3157 so we're got a little bit of distance between the current price and 30 but I think we are really setting up for an explosive move. I thought that for a while. It's going to happen. I'm confident of that. Uh, you know, don't press your luck. You really should be buying more silver. And As global economic uncertainty persists, precious metals are again in the spotlight. While gold has long been the darling of investors seeking safe haven assets, silver is now catching the eye of market watchers and industry experts. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and a well-known advocate for gold, has recently turned his attention to silver's promising outlook. With silver trading at $31.57, Schiff notes it mirrored gold's pattern when it supported above $2,000 before surging to nearly $2,700. He believes silver is set for a significant breakout and urges investors to buy now, anticipating an explosive upward move soon. The white metal's recent climb towards $32 is primarily attributed to prevailing market sentiment. A sour mood among investors has increased silver's appeal as a safe haven asset. Additionally, declining U.S. yields have bolstered demand for precious metals. Market speculation suggests the Federal Reserve may cut interest rates by 50 basis points by year-end, further strengthening silver's position as an alternative asset. Despite its potential, silver often plays second fiddle to gold in the investment world. Gold's status as the superstar of precious metals overshadows silver's opportunities. However, current market conditions and silver's momentum suggest it may be poised to catch up with gold's strong performance this year. Peter Schiff is notably bullish on silver. He urges investors to act quickly as he anticipates an imminent explosive upward move in its price. He warns that investors who arrive late to the market may find themselves holding the bag when stock markets inevitably decline. In contrast, those who have invested in silver will likely see their decisions rewarded handsomely. With silver already up nearly 5% this year and further turbulence anticipated, it presents promising prospects for even stronger growth in the months ahead. Schiff's insights highlight the strategic advantage of investing in silver amid an uncertain economic landscape. Before we dive into this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, please share this with anyone who might benefit from it. Silver, to me now, reminds me a lot of what gold was like earlier this year when it was building a base above 2000 and we then you know exploded and now we're getting close to 2700 silver is doing the same thing at $30 so i think $30 to silver is kind of like 2000 was for gold we're building a strong base of support around $30 right now we're 3157 so we're got a little bit of distance between the current price and 30 but I think we are really setting up for an explosive move. I thought that for a while. It's going to happen. I'm confident of that. Uh, you know, don't press your luck. You really should be buying more silver. In fact, we're having a, a sale right now at Shift Gold. It's kind of like a pre-silver breakout sale. Junk silver, half dollars, the 50 cent pieces. You know, some of them have uh, Kennedy, John F. Kennedy on 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 the on the coin the older ones have ben franklin i like those with you know they've got the liberty bell i think on one side and franklin on the other those are the franklin half dollars they replaced those with the kennedy half dollars but they didn't make nearly as many half dollars as they made dimes and quarters so there are not as many around and so they normally sell for a pretty big premium relative to their silver weight then when you buy the dimes and the quarters, and I like the coin, the bond market has been down and yields have been up on a weekly basis every single week since the Fed cut rates. And that's exactly what I said would happen, uh, that rates would start to rise. And that is going to ultimately confound what the Fed is trying to accomplish with its rate cuts. People still think that rates are rising because the economy is strong, the dollar's rising. That's what's kept gold from making another new high. I mean, it's not really going down very much. Gold right now is 2,663 as we speak. I mean, the high was like 2,670 something. So we're no more than 10 or $15 off an all-time record high for the price of gold. So gold hasn't gone down. It just in this environment of rising rates, 
um, strengthening dollar, stock market hitting new highs, gold hasn't made a new high. And I think that's par partially the reason that Bitcoin's been able to make some headway now that you know, you, you've stopped the movement in gold. Uh, people now are paying attention a little bit more to Bitcoin. Oh, gold's not moving. This is just the traders I'm talking about. People who are trading gold mining stocks or people who are trading in, uh, in, in Bitcoin ETFs. These are just traders. People are looking for momentum, looking for something that's moving. And they're just going to trade it. You know, by the way, I made a comment in my last podcast and one of my, uh, uh, you know, clients emailed in. I guess there was a misunderstanding because I, I, I try to explain why the uh, gold mining stocks uh, were so low when they should be so much higher. And I said, well, you know, the investors don't understand it, that the people who are buying gold, physical gold, are different than the buyer groups for gold mining stocks because the buyers of gold mining stocks are the investors, the stock market, right? And within the stock market, there's a lot of dumb money in there. Now, that doesn't mean all the people who are buying the gold stocks are the dumb money, but all the people who could be buying the gold stocks who are buying other stocks instead, they're the dumb money, right? These are the guys who are also buying 10-year uh, or 30-year treasuries at 4%. They should be buying gold stocks, but they're not because they're buying something else instead. But eventually, they're going to figure out what incredible value uh, opportunities these stocks have. I mean, right now, I mean, nobody really cares. Most traders don't even care. In fact, some people don't even look at anything other than a chart. The fundamentals don't even matter. They just go where the action is. They go where the momentum is. And, and that's where the money goes. Because everybody is so short-term focused. Schiff notes that while Bitcoin has seen notable fluctuations, dipping below $60,000 but currently trading above $67,000, he considers this shift relatively insignificant. According to Schiff, Bitcoin has been range-bound for the past seven months, suggesting a period of relative stability despite short-term volatility. In a more immediate context, Bitcoin rose 1.8% to trade at $64,023, reaching a daily high of $64,464. Unchanged U.S. producer prices supported this upward momentum for September, where lower prices for goods offset a slight increase in service costs. This data points to a favorable inflation outlook, reinforcing expectations for a potential interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve next month. Schiff's analysis extends beyond cryptocurrency markets to broader economic issues. He argues that while people dislike paying taxes, many value government benefits. In his view, this dynamic significantly drives inflation, as individuals unknowingly pay an inflation tax instead of traditional income taxes or tariffs. This observation ties into the broader economic discussion of inflation's effects on tax systems. Expected inflation typically has limited real effects in purely private economies. However, the consequences can be more pronounced when the tax system is not neutral regarding inflation. Let's get back to the video. People don't like paying taxes, but a lot of people like getting government benefits. That's why we have so much inflation. People are paying the inflation tax instead of the income tax or instead of tariffs. Uh, they just don't know that. And unfortunately, the people who have been disproportionately impacted by the inflation tax are the very African-Americans that Kamala Harris is now promising to help. The fact that they've been so decimated by that tax, that's one of the reasons uh, that so many of them have abandoned the Democrats and are now voting Republican. Bitcoin's had a pretty big move. You know, it got down below 60,000, uh, didn't go much below it. Today, we were trading above 67,000 on Bitcoin. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. Bitcoin has been range bound for the past seven months. So I don't think there's anything significant about the move from 60,000 to 67,000. But I do think it is part of the Trump trade because a lot of people in crypto believe that Donald Trump is very bullish for Bitcoin and that if Trump wins, uh, that Bitcoin is going to moon, uh, that the U.S. government is going to be buying Bitcoin. Now, again, it's not going to happen. In fact, Trump, with all the promises he's made, and he's made a lot of promises, and I've gone over some of those promises on, uh, on the podcast. But one of the promises he did not make was to buy any Bitcoin. I know uh, uh, RFK Jr., when he gave his speech at the Bitcoin conference, uh, he said that he would buy Bitcoin, but he's not going to be president. Donald Trump talked about a Bitcoin reserve, but he didn't want to fund that reserve by buying Bitcoin. He just promised not to sell 
any of the Bitcoin the U.S. government already owns. Well, by the time he becomes president, and you know, I still think he's going to win. I said that from the beginning that I didn't think anybody could beat him. And despite the fact that the media tried to manufacture all this hype and popularity for uh, Kamala Harris, the problem was they couldn't sustain that myth all the way to election day. It began unraveling uh, rather quickly. I mean, what maybe they needed to do is they needed to shoehorn her in a week before, right? If they could have kept Biden on the ticket up until like a week before the election and then maybe pulled the switcher. I don't know, but they, 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 they got her in there and they ginned up all this phony support. I didn't think it would last. I thought Trump would, uh, you know, would, um, would come back on top. Silver shows signs of a potential breakout amid favorable market conditions, reflecting shifting dynamics in the commodities landscape. Rising inflation disproportionately affects individuals, prompting many to explore alternative investments like Bitcoin. As Bitcoin experiences notable price movements, understanding the broader economic context becomes crucial for investors. What are your thoughts on the current trends in silver and Bitcoin amidst rising inflation? Let us know your perspective in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights.